Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here. Tango down. I repeat, tango down. This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Welcome to episode 19 of Tech Shop. I am, of course, I'm Paul Bauer, a.k.a. Twitter.com slash Pablo. In this episode, we're going to be talking about something fun, but it can also be very dangerous. In fact, it can be downright illegal. I'm talking about a little thing called a denial of service attack. If you've been watching the news for the last year, you may have heard countless news stories about a group of hackers called Anonymous. A lot of people have called what these guys do hacktivism, because... Although they tend to cause some mischief, it's primarily done to make a political point of some sort. Their primary method of hacktivism? The distributed denial of service attack. If you don't know what that is, basically it's when an epic ton of computers on the internet bombard a web server with so much traffic that the web server crashes. When the web server crashes, it keeps regular people, like you and me, from being able to open that page. If you follow anyone in Anonymous on Twitter, you know when these sorts of attacks are happening. Because these guys sent out a tweet about it with the hashtag Tango Down. Before we get too much further into denial of service attacks though, let's break for the weekly news brief. This week's news brief is brought to you by Gamefly. Get the latest video games delivered right to your house with no late fees. Keep them as long as you want, send them back when you're done. Sign up for your free, no-risk trial by visiting deals.techshop.com and clicking on the Gamefly banner. Apple recently held their annual Worldwide Developers Conference where they announced the release of iOS 6, OS X Mountain Lion, and the new MacBook Pro that is sort of a hybrid between the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. will have their much-talked-about Retina display with a 2880 by 1880 resolution. You can buy that new toy for a cool 2200 bucks. LinkedIn has finally chimed in on their recent security breach that ended with 6.5 million of its users' passwords dumped to an underground Russian hacker site. LinkedIn said that they have finished disabling all the affected accounts and don't feel anyone else is at risk. LinkedIn is still in the process of investigating, so further bad news is possible to turn up about this breach. Apparently there have been rumors that Andy Rubin, the creator of Android, may be leaving Google to work for a startup called Cloudcar. The rumor was spread by ex-Microsoft strategist Robert Scoble on his Google Google Plus account. Ruben denied the rumor and basically said there are over 900,000 Android devices activated each day. Therefore, he has no plans to leave Google. Finally, the attackers responsible for the flame virus that spread around Europe and the Middle East are trying to cover their tracks by actually wiping the virus from infected machines. Symantec discovered the attempt when a command was sent to overwrite the malware on one of their honeypot servers was detected. News for the weekly news brief is taken right from our Tech Chop Daily Paper Lead page, available at news.techchop.com. Don't forget that you can sponsor your own news brief for only $10 by clicking the donate button in the sidebar at techchop.com. Got something to say? We'll be your 30-second podium for only $10. Tech Chop! Before the break, we talked about a distributed denial of service attack and how it's one of the favorite methods for the hacktivist group Anonymous to make their point on the internet. How does one perform that sort of attack? Well, on a small scale, you can perform a similar attack yourself with a really easy to use GUI tool called Low Orbit Ion Cannon, or LOIC. LOIC is an open source tool written in .NET and is designed for network stress testing. Using LOIC by yourself probably won't take down a major site. And if you try to use LOIC from, say, your house, that sort of attack could easily be tracked back to you from your public IP address. Needless to say, this is a tool you would use to test your internal web server's ability to withstand an attack. Or, at the very least, use this thing at a library or a local mom-and-pop coffee shop. I'm just kidding. Don't try to use this for anything malicious. I'm not going to take any responsibility for your own stupidity. I can just see it now. But your honor, the guy on YouTube clearly said we should do this from our local coffee shop. Anyway, I also saw a YouTube video a while back where some guys claiming to be a part of Anonymous were asking everyone to use LOIC at a particular date and time to take down Facebook. 
they were saying that people should run Loic over Tor, which we talked about last week, to hide their IP addresses. That may sound like a good idea, but all that will really end up doing is taking down Tor and ah, ah. it up for everyone else. That being said, I'm going to show you how you can run Loic on Power Puntu Linux and how you can see results in real time with it. But first, some water is coming. And that means many of us will be spending more time working from home, working on the road, or better still, working from the beach. With all those slackers trying to escape real work by avoiding the office and getting their sunbathing on, rounding them up for a meeting is almost impossible. Well, not impossible if you have GoToMeeting with HD Faces by Citrix though, am I right? GoToMeeting by Citrix allows you to collaborate on files and plans online. And with HD Faces, all you need is a webcam to turn your online meetings into a group HD video conference. Which is nice because sometimes we just need a little FaceTime to get stuff done. You just can't get that kind of quality collaboration on a phone call. Attendees can join your online meeting from any computer, iPad, iPhone, or Android device by simply downloading the free app. My viewers can try GoToMeeting with HD Faces free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Then download the free app. Bam. Done. One more thing. As if using GoToMeeting for free wasn't good enough, GoToMeeting is literally giving away eight brand spanking new iPads on Facebook. All you have to do is visit Facebook and like the GoToMeeting page. Then you can enter to win a new iPad. And you can refer a friend. If they win the iPad, so do you. So spread the word. Check it out. Like GoToMeeting on Facebook and you can end up using GoToMeeting on a brand new iPad. The awesomeness levels have just been kicked up a notch. The ball's in your court now, Jack. I hope you win, and don't forget to try GoToMeeting for free today. And we're back. So we've talked about Low Orbit Ion Cannon, or LOIC, and I mentioned I would show you how to run it on Bowerpunt Linux 12.04. That's weird though, right? Because LOIC is written in .NET, which is a Microsoft joint. Well, I included LOIC in Bowerpunt natively, running with Mono, the Linux implementation of .NET. To run it, just click on the little cannon icon on the launcher. Enter the URL or the IP address of the target, click lock on, select your attack method, port and number of threads, then click I'm a charging my laser. Here we're running it against a Windows VM. As you can see before the attack, resources are fairly idle. During the attack, that stuff spikes like crazy. Imagine having a few hundred thousand people doing this at the same time against one machine. Now you can see why DDoS attacks can be so effective. One can fend off DDoS attacks like this by implementing load balancing and redundancy. A single web server is more susceptible to a denial of service than multiple servers. This is one of the reasons why Google and Facebook will probably never be taken down. They have hundreds of servers to handle the incredible load of real traffic they see every day. I saw one site talking about protecting your machines from these attacks by saying the same old cliche of make sure your systems are patched, and make sure you block ports on your firewall that you don't use. However, if you have a service open to the internet, that service is by nature open on your firewall, and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it if you want that service open to the public. And patches don't really apply with this too much either. Besides throwing more servers at the problem, the only other thing I can think of to mitigate this type of attack so by getting a good enterprise level firewall designed to detect these sorts of attacks and defend against them. Cisco is a good choice, but you'll pay a lot of money for the name. Another that I like is SonicWall E-Class firewalls with the subscription to their intrusion prevention service. SonicWall is now owned by Dell. I'd love to know if you have any other suggestions for preventing or mitigating denial of service attacks. What do you guys do on your own networks? Let us know on TechShop's Facebook page or sound off below in the comments. That's all I have for this episode. I wanted to take a moment to let you know about our new free Android app available on Google Play. Stay up to date with the latest shows right on your phone. Just open Google Play on your Android phone and search for Tech Shop. It's the only one on Google Play, so you can't miss it. You can also catch us on the Tech Podcast Network where you will find tons of other tech-related goodness. Our TPN show of the week is the MHF Tech Show. You want tech? We got tech. The latest gaming reviews. Deciding on that piece of tech you want, we can give you the answer. Latest news, views, reviews, competitions, and interviews from the world of tech. Find out what's really going on. MHF 
Tech, hosted by Adiman423 and Chris Zolak Johnson, is your number one source for your weekly fix of tech. We are a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network at techpodcast.com. You can listen or subscribe to our shows at mhftech.net. Until next time, watch those skies and back up your data. We'll see you next week right here on Tech Chop.